would rather really be this morning than besides here. Amen. Do you? No. Is there something else in your heart besides Jesus? If it is, it's going to consume you, and that's where you're going to want to be. Amen. I'm like David. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, I, I get happy coming to church. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Somebody says, yeah, I don't care too much for church, but you don't want to go to heaven. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Because there's going to be a church up there. Oh, glory to God. Singing and worshiping. Yeah. Running. Shouting and clapping and dancing. You know, heaven's not like this. <laughs> Come on, bro. Hell ain't either. <laughs> you know, you're right. Hell ain't either. There's so many awful screams in hell and agony. You know, Bill Beats, he has his testimony. If I'm saying his last name right, I get into my message. But I'm not your typical preacher. Amen. I don't have a list where I just go by. I mean, I got some scriptures here that I wrote down earlier, but I go with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. He called me. I didn't call myself. I was going to be a pool player, a gambler. Amen. That's what I was going to be. But thank God Jesus had another plan. Yeah. Bill Weeks was a, is a, I don't know, I guess he still is. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, he was in real estate. And he said all of a sudden him and his wife went to bed one night and he was dropped into a cell. And all of a sudden he thought, where am I at and how am I still alive because of the heat? He knew that the heat was around 2,000 degrees. And he says all of a sudden the Lord took it from him that he was a Christian. Took it. And he, he landed in this cell. And I'm not going to go into all this story because that's not my message this morning. You can go on YouTube and heal. And he, hear... Bill Weiss, his testimony. And many of you heard his book or maybe bought his book, 23 Minutes in Hell. And he gives his testimony. But I said this to you when you said, hell's not quiet either. He said, imagine a baby crying or screaming and it gets on your nerves. He said, imagine that times a thousand or a million. He used that. Hell is so horrible and so loud that it is never quiet there because of the screams of the damned. Because they once lived on the earth like you and I. They were once in a fleshly body. See, this body is not I. This ain't me. This is just the house that holds me. You really don't see me. You see my outward man. Because the Bible talks about there's an inward man and there's an outward man. The outward man is the man you see. And God, oh, thank you, Lord, that's good. I love the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's what I said. Go with him. The Lord just said, He sees the inward man. Yeah. I'm the one that sees the inward man. That's what I see. I really can't see you. I don't know what's going on in you. Only God can see that inward man, that heart, what, what's in that heart. If it pleases Him or if it doesn't please Him, He can only see your inward man. But the only thing no, that I can tell a little bit about your inward man through your character and once I get to know you a little bit and I hang around you and I know you for some time, I'm going to know a little bit about that inward man, but God knows all about it. Yeah. Amen? But the only thing that we are accustomed with is this, right here, this outward man. How do we get familiar with people through this flesh? Amen? Thank God, hallelujah, that I'm more than just a physical being. I am a spirit being possessing a soul, which is a part of your intellect, and living in a physical body. Amen, Like a Glory to God. I'm telling you, he's going to have to wait his turn. It's my turn, son. And he gets mad and cries over it when he can't preach. <laughs> oh, God, it's good. Amen, Miss. Praise the Lord. I want you to go with me to Luke chapter 8. I want you to look at Luke chapter 8, verse 18. Luke chapter 8, verse 18. Jesus is speaking here, and I want to talk to you this morning about hear and be healed. 
Many people want to be healed. Listen to me, church. But nobody wants to hear nothing. Amen. It don't work that way. Look here at Luke chapter 18. I mean, excuse me, verse 18, chapter 8. Jesus is speaking. Take heed, therefore, how you hear. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given. And whosoever has not, from him shall be taken even that which he seemeth to have. You know, some people that come to church and Jesus says, take heed. He just says, take heed to how you hear. And he goes on, he says, those that have much are going to receive more. Why? Because they're always attentive. But someone that just turns their ear to the Word of God and says, I've heard that before. Jesus said, even those, even what they have, will be taken from. Now, I want you to notice something. Jesus went on to say, take heed, therefore, how you hear. You've got to make sure that you hear the Word of God. Because there's a lot of junk that goes on, even behind pulpits in America. Not every pulpit, but there's some men that stand behind here and they just do it because they just do it because they wanted to do it. It seemed like it would be an easy job. There's some men that stands behind here. They never intended to stand behind here. That wasn't their purpose. They got saved and God called them behind here. There's difference in preachers. Yes. Now I want you to look. You're there at Luke. Look at Luke chapter 5. And so many people in the church has heard the wrong thing instead of the right thing. I want you this morning to hear the right thing. Amen? Amen. Look at Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. I want you to look at verses 1 and 15. Luke 5, 1 says, And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him, to hear the word of God, look at this. He stood by the lake of Gennesaret. Now I want you to notice that. What did the people press upon Jesus? To hear the word of God. You know, many people in these days, they want to go somewhere where, oh, what's happening over there? And that's good and fine. But first of all, I want to hear the word of God. I don't want to just go to a meeting at the word of God. If signs and wonders are being manifested, great. And Jesus Christ is getting the glory, great. But I want to go and I want to hear the word of God. Yeah. And then let God perform. Amen. But there's some people that just run after itchy years instead of the word of God. Amen. I want to hear the Word of God. Yes, I want to see signs and wonders. Yes, I want to experience the supernatural. But I also want to first and foremost hear this. If this isn't being preached, it's not, God's not going to show up with signs and wonders. Amen? What did they do in verse number 1 again? And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him... To hear the Word of God. Did you know there's not a hunger for the Word of God these days? Amen. Or every church would be packed across Mississippi, across the United States. Now look at verse 15. You're there. Luke 5, 1. Now jump to verse 15. That same chapter of Luke 5. But so much the more went there a fame abroad of him... And great multitudes came together, look, to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. And he withdrew himself unto the wilderness and prayed. Now see, there's a lot of people hearing and healing go hand in hand. People want to come and be healed. Don't want to hear nothing. They start looking at their watch when 35 minutes goes by. My stomach's getting hungry. Yeah, crucify that outward man. It's crucify that flesh. But the Word of God says here, great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed. 
Many people, when they come into a full gospel church or when, or when they needing a miracle, you know, if they come, they come for one purpose. See, I need you to pray for me that I'll receive a miracle. And they really, when they're in the service, many times I've had people in the service, they didn't really want to be in that service. They wanted one thing. I can't wait till the end of the service where Pastor Dennis can lay hands on me. And didn't even hear what I preach. And usually those kind leave out of here the same way they came in because they closed their ears to the Word of God. Amen. You and I need the Word of God. Because, see, this is what sets men and women free. Amen. Yes. Because there's so, there's been so, this has been watered down, stoned on, uh, 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 misquoted, misrepresented. Look, so many men and women have put their opinions and their interpretations upon this instead of reading the Word of God for what it actually says. That's why you, Jesus said, take heed how you hear. Amen? Because yeah. you need to take heed how you hear. If your spirit doesn't jive with something, I was reading a book years ago, Brother Stennis, and while I was reading this book, it didn't produce faith in me. It produced confusion. You know what I did? I stopped in the middle of it. I said, I'm not reading that book no more. It's bringing confusion to me instead of faith to me. And anything that brings confusion to you, you need to put it down and quit reading it. Now, have you ever heard that years ago, you know, they always say, you know, and I like Reese's. And I have to really watch myself with Reese's. <laughs> Especially the Reese's eggs oh, and the Christmas trees. You know, and the, the hearts during Valentine's because the peanut butter is so fresh. And I'm like, ain't it, Brother Stennis? You know where I'm coming from. And I'm like, I can get a bag and just eat it, but this flesh here wants to eat the whole bag at a time. Well, you've heard that, that saying, you are what you eat, right? Did you know you are what you read? You are who you sit up under? You are what you hear. That's right. What goes into you, what you feed into you. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 23, the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Yeah. Let me just word it this way. As a man continues to think, so he will become. Yes. Yeah. Amen. You think bad thoughts. You think resentment thoughts. You start, you start letting the devil cloud your mind with unseemly thoughts. It won't be long that you're going to think along that pattern and all of a sudden your joy is sap. You're not the person that you used to be. You're a totally different person than you were 30 days ago. What does the devil want? If he got your mind, he's got you. So, my dear brother and sister, be careful what you hear and be careful how you hear it. Make sure it's the Word of God and make sure it's not the opinions and the traditions of men and women. But make sure it's the Word of God. Now they came to hear Him and to be healed. I remember hearing a pastor say this one time and it's so true. So true. He said he told his church, Brother Stennis, he told his church, he said, if you would give me the same opportunity, now listen, you're going to like this. He said, if you give me the same opportunity as you do the doctor, I'll get you healed every time, no matter what they have. He says, you go to the doctor. He says, he, he subscribes this to you. He says, come back. You go Tuesday. He says, come back Thursday. You heard, and you go back Thursday. He says, okay, then you've been taking this uh, three times, a, a, a one time, three times a day. Okay, I want you to continue to do that, but I want you to come back and see me Tuesday. You heard what that doctor says? You go back Tuesday. Amen? And we're not against doctors. We're not against them. I'm telling you, if you need to go to the doctor, you better go. Amen? Yeah. But this pastor said, I heard him say, if you would give me the same opportunity as you do the doctor, I'll get you healed. And what he meant is through the Word of God. Mm -hmm. So, some people will come to church, they hear one service, oh, they went back to that, it didn't happen, and they quit coming. They only heard the word one time, and then they wonder why it doesn't work. Well, what about if you went to the doctor that one time and he told you to take this three times a day, and you took it just one time a day? Oh, it didn't work, it didn't work, the doctor was wrong. No, you didn't hear, you didn't hear him correctly. 
You didn't hear what that man was telling you. That man told you to take it three times a day and come back and see him on a Thursday. And you took it one time. You didn't take heed how you hear. And many times we come to church, if God's got something for me, I'm going to get it. Yeah, he's got something for you. The good word of God. Yeah. Amen. And a lot of times we daydream, well, I really didn't want to come to church today. Be glad when this preacher's through. You think you're going to get something from God? You're not going to get it. I remember one time hearing about Ken, Ken Jr., he was a teenager now. And his daddy always prayed for him to receive his healing. Grew up in divine help. Grew up where his dad would go out and hold meetings. Till finally Ken Jr. got old enough and he got an ear fungus in his ear. And so Brother Irwin took him to the doctor to get his diagnosis what it was. And Brother Irwin said, thank you doctor for your diagnosis. And so said, son, let's go home and pray. And the Lord spoke to him and says, your prayers are not going to work for him no more. He says he can preach some of your sermons better than you can to his friends. He said, the Lord spoke to him and says, you carried him on your faith for all these years. And now it's time for him to start using his own faith. Amen. And so he called his son in there and he says, he told him what the Lord uh, told him. He says, son, now I'll come in agreement with you, but the Lord spoke to me and says, from here on out, you're going to have to use your own faith to receive your own healing. Because I've always carried you because you was my son. And you can do that. I carried my son. Uh, with my, uh, my son had pleurisy for uh, 35 minutes, I think it was one time. Every time it would hit him, I'd go in there. No, you don't, devil. You go from him in Jesus' name. He'd be in the bed. He might have hit him in his back. I said, in Jesus' name, I rebuke pleurisy. Go from him. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke Percy. Thank you, Lord. There's no Percy in this house. He went off to sleep. Amen. Got woke up again, said it somewhere else. No, you don't, devil. In Jesus' name, I bind Percy. He can't come into this house. And I lift my hands. He went back to sleep, woke back up, and I sent him. Somebody says he had it. No, he didn't. The devil was trying to put it on him. I wasn't going to allow it. Amen. Amen. You've been given authority in the name of Jesus. But if you go somewhere and you hear, and you hear, now if it be the will of God, if it be the will of God, he'll heal you. It is the will of God for you to be well. Jesus said, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Amen. We, we studied about this morning that the only time that Jesus used the words in a prayer, if it be thy will, was the prayer of consecration and dedication concerning the will of God for his life. But when he came to Lazarus' tomb in Luke 11, he came to Lazarus' tomb and he didn't say, Lord, if it be your will, can we raise him from the dead? He says, Lord, he said, Father, I thank you that you hear me always. Yes. Lazarus, come forth. Amen. And he came forth. The only time that Jesus used the words if it be thy will, was in the garden of Gethsemane. Yes, amen. He's going to the cross, but not my will, Father, but yours be done. See, I like that this morning. There's different games, but different games have different rules to different sports. And we took, they're just like, there's different prayers. There's the prayer of agreement, the prayer of consecration, dedication, the prayer of faith, the prayer of body and loosing. Amen. There's different prayers. If we just put prayer in one sack, shook it up, and tried to apply rules from one to another, it don't work. Yeah. Right. Take heed how you hear. Take heed what you hear. Because you are what you hear. You are what goes into you. Amen? Amen. They came to hear Him. And what else? To be healed. They came to hear. Hearing and healing go together. Now go to Luke 6, 17. We're around Luke this morning. Luke 6, 17. And he came down with them and stood in the plain. 
in the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to, on another occasion, hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Again, they weren't healed first. They came to hear something first. To hear him and to be healed. You know why there's some people that have still been alive today if they'd have been in church and been hearing something. Instead of, oh, oh, thank you, Lord, that's right. I remember there was times that I preached even in this church and past churches. I had a sermon to preach, and somebody was branded on my spirit. And I knew that person needed to be here that morning just to hear the message that I was going to deliver. They never showed up. My spirit agreed. I said they needed to be here because they would have even been set free or healed. It's so important to hear the Word of God, my brother and sister. Amen? He said he was in Sire, he was the coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. You know, it's just like Christian. She had started having panic attacks. A week ago this past Wednesday, we prayed for you, right? Yes. And a week ago this past Wednesday, was a week ago, we prayed for her. She's just going to see a number of doctors. See, that's what the devil does. Yes. He wants to drain your finances. Like the woman in the fifth chapter of Mark, she spent all of her living, suffered many physicians, and spent all she had, and it was nothing better. That's what the devil wanted to do to you. I'm going to say this because this happened to Christian. And Christian don't mind me using her as an example. I said something a week ago Wednesday night that registered on her because she told me later what I said. And I felt compressed to say it about the spirit of fear and about expectancy. I said, when you get delivered for something, don't start expecting it to come back or seeing if it's, if it's there. Because now when you're seeing if it's there, you're expecting it to come back. Well, see, that registered on her. And that helped her. What about if she didn't come a week ago this past Wednesday night? Would she have been healed? She canceled her doctor's appointment because she was set free. Jesus set her free. Now, you can do that without Brother Dennis laying hands on you, but you've got to use authority. Yeah. But I like what the Bible says. One will put a thousand, but two will put ten thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Way more. Man, if it's somebody I know that's a prayer warrior and they're connected to God, when I have all these men and women that come through here, what a, I'm going to be some of the first ones in line. Man, lay your hands on me. Yeah. Why? Because I want something. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Well, you got to be careful what you hear. You can hear the wrong thing and it can rob you of your healing. They came to hear the Word of God and to be healed. Now look at Luke. We've been to Luke 8, 5, 6. Now we're going to Luke 4. Go to Luke 4, 14. Luke chapter 4, verse 14. Hallelujah. Isn't it wonderful? Luke chapter 4, verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he what? And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified at all. Why did he teach? That was his first and foremost ministry. Many people read the Bible with religious glasses on, and they think that all that Jesus did was he don't cast out devils. He did do that, but he put the teaching and preaching ministry before that. He taught. Why did he teach? Why did Jesus teach first? What does the Bible say in Romans 10, 17? Faith cometh by hearing. By hearing. Didn't say faith comes by seeing. It's good to see a miracle. But faith comes out. Faith cometh. Faith cometh by hearing. And not in all. In what? And hearing. See, he didn't say faith comes by having heard. It comes by hearing and hearing. 
faith is continuously yeah. coming while you continuously yeah. hearing. Somebody says, yeah, I heard that before. What's the last time you heard it? Ah, I'm about to go see. Uh, that's your problem. You quit hearing the word of God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. That's good. Listen to me. Listen. If you quit hearing the word of God, guess what else? Guess what else you're going to hear? The word of the enemy speaking yeah. to your intellect. Yeah. You're either going to listen to him or you're going to listen to the word of God. Amen. 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 Now look at verse 15. Jesus taught first. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, and set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him witness and wonder at all the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth and they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said unto them, You will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. And he went on to say in verse 24, And he said, Verily I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you of a truth, many widows, we're in Israel in the days of Elias when the heavens were shut up three years and six months when great famine was throughout all the land but unto none of them was Elias sent save unto Sarepta a city of Sidon unto a woman that was a widow and many lepers were in Israel in the time of e e Elijah we we'll say Elijah the prophet and none of them was cleansed Excuse me, that's Elisha. Elisha, the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, saving Naaman the Syrian. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath, and rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him unto the brow of the hill whereon their city was built, that might cast him dead hell on. Now look at this. But he passing through the midst of them, with his way. You know why they wanted to do that? Because they stopped their ears. They did not want to hear what Christ was speaking to them in the synagogue. And many of the religious people were jealous because he said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. They did not hear him. If they would have just opened their ears and heard, they would have known that the Messiah, the one that created the heavens and the earth, was here before us. And yet, they did not even know him. The Bible says, the world was created by him and they didn't even. He came unto his own and his own didn't even know him. Amen. He goes on to say, and listen there, he, he passed through their midst because they was trying to kill him. Verse 31, and came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee. And what did he do? And what did he do? And taught them on the Sabbath days. And they were astonished at his doctrine. For his word was full of power. Jesus did more teaching, more preaching than the healing. Yeah. But don't get me wrong. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. He had a healing ministry. He cast out devils. He healed multitudes. But first and foremost, he was teaching and preaching first. Yeah. Look at Matthew 9, 35. Matthew chapter 9. Look at verse 35. Matthew puts it in order here, and I like that. Matthew 9, 35. And Jesus went about all the cities. Here it is. 
and villages teaching. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues. And I ain't all he did. What else? Preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And now, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. That's the order that he went in. The first order that he did was teaching, preaching, and then the healing. You'll find out as you read Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, that's the order. That's it. He didn't just go, come on in here, guys. I'm fixing to have a healing crusade. And he never did that without preaching or teaching the word of God first. I'm going to show you one place that he couldn't heal. Listen, Jesus put the ministry of teaching and preaching before the healing ministry. Why? Because people needed to hear he was anointed. The woman with the issue of blood, she heard he was anointed. Because the Bible says, remember, Mark 5, 25, I believe it is, a certain woman with this issue of blood suffered many physicians, you know, spent all that she had. The Bible says, when she had heard yeah. about Jesus, yeah. when she heard, he, well, I wonder what she heard. She heard that he was anointed. Jesus was going to the synagogue, not only this one, he would, everyone he went into, he would tell them, I'm anointed. He would preach the word of God to them. He would read the scriptures to them. That's the first and foremost he did. Then he ministered to the sick and the disease. Why? Because the world needs the word of God. Oh, thank you, Lord. That's good. Here's what the Holy Ghost just gave you. You can be deceived by healings. You can be deceived by counterfeit healings. Did you know the devil can perform healings? But he ain't out there preaching the word of God. And he's not calling to. You know, there's people over in Africa, they go to the witch doctor. And he quite can do his thing to, to, to get rid of some sicknesses and disease in people's bodies because he is dominated by demon spirits. And if they pay him or, or do something for this witch doctor, he'll go out there and, and he can do something to get, get them some relief, but it'll come back home. Yes, amen. You know what else can witch doctors can do? They place curses on people. Well, the devil, I mean, he's a counterfeit. That's, but he ain't going to be preaching the Word of God. Amen. Amen. He's no match for this. How did Jesus defeat the devil? It is written. It is written again. It is written, Satan. What did he do? He used the Word of God. How is Christians today defeating the devil? Are they speaking the Word of God? If you're not speaking the Word of God, you're open prey. The devil knows that I can get to them because they never read the Word of God, they don't meditate in it, and they have no ulterior against me. That's what the enemy is saying. No, when the enemy comes to you, I quote James 4, 7 a lot. When he comes to me, the other day, something hit me in my body. I don't even know what it was now. We was walking. Where was it? We were somewhere. And I thought, well, where did this come from? I started having some symptoms while I was walking. I was walking. Yeah. I, and I just we went into maybe a grocery store or one more. And all of a sudden I thought, oh, what's this? I'm not, it just come on me. Just something up in here. And I just says, oh, no, you don't. I was suddenly under my breath. I was like, inside. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, was, yeah. <laughs> I was like, inside. <laughs> Amen. That's what you got to be. You don't go, oh, devil, please. Please, please don't bother me today. And he's like, yes, I got at the right house. <laughs> when you walk inside, you're like, I'm going to get you when I get away from all these people. You know what I mean? I'm going to assist you in Jesus. Why? He knows. I'm not putting up with it. And so I got up under my breath there. I says, devil, you go for me in Jesus' name. I resist these symptoms. They don't on me a couple hours later. The next day, the symptoms left like that. Why? You've been given authority. But some people hear, they hear, and I've heard this in full gospel churches. Well, you know the devil's powerful. 
Where's that at in the New Testament? Can you show that to me? In my Bible it says, Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread over serpents and scorpions and over yeah. all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall not by any means hurt you. My Bible tells me in Colossians that Jesus stripped him, whipped him, yeah. and made a show of him openly, triumphing over him in it. My Bible tells me saints have been defeated. Yeah. Can you show me in the New Testament where he's powerful? The Bible says in Ephesians 4, 27, neither give place to the devil. He can have no place in you unless you give it permission. Amen. He's been whipped. Yeah. Glory to God. My life, champion from heaven, my Lord, my Savior, yeah. my healer, yeah. my redeemer, yeah. the lion of the tribe of Judah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory. Jesus Christ, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. He's been whipped by him, and Satan still has a headache to this day. Yes. And it won't go away. Well, Jesus put the teaching ministry and the, he and, and the preaching ministry and then the healing sickness and then the healing diseases. You see that Matthew 9, 35. Last verse of Scripture. Go with me to Mark, chapter 6. I might not be so adequate in my words, but you get my preaching, don't you? Amen. Amen. Amen, Julie. God is good. Now I want you to look at verse 1 through 6 and Mark chapter 6. And he went out from thence and came into his own country and his disciples followed him. And when the seventh day was come, he began to teach. There it is again. He began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him, and many what? And many hearing him were astonished. Saying, from whence has this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him. But not everybody in one place is going to believe what others are saying. Amen? There might be some people in here saying, I can't wait to get out of here. I'm through hearing this, preacher. <laughs> You're going to need this. You're, listen, there's a devil out there, and he's, he, he wants to devour you. Yeah. He tried to devour me when I was, how old was I? 15 or 16? The devil tried to kill me. I come out of the bar and put all. I'm a junior nine ball champion. I make my money. I go buy my polo shirts and Levi's with the, my gamblings and my tournament money. Because my daddy would never buy me nothing like that. All me that up wrong with Took me to TG and Y. I don't know if you know TG and Y. Who remembers TG and Y? Okay. How many members Howard Brothers? Yeah. Okay, that's where I went to get my toys and stuff. There wasn't no Walmart. There. Well, I might ask one time, Daddy, can you buy me like a polo shirt? We ain't gonna find out how much they were, son. <laughs> he ain't buy no polo shirt. <laughs> Till finally, at the age of 15, so 14, 15, 16, 17, man, I'm making some good money. Playing in tournaments in game, but I'm a junior nine ball champion. Been on TV and the magazines across the country. And where'd I go? It was uh, D. A. Holmes, but it became Billers. I go to D. A. Holmes and Mac Race. I said all of this stuff that I couldn't get, I'm going shopping. Thank God I got delivered. So thank you. Amen. Amen. Christian, glory to God. God is good. But I said all that to you to say this. <clears throat> Thank God I was delivered. And when I was delivered, I heard the right thing. Yeah. I started hearing the right gospel. Yeah. Amen. I didn't hear something that was watered down, that was stoked on, that's telling me that's not for me today. I didn't have a lot of religion in my head. I didn't have a lot, Jordan. I had, it was fresh and open that when I read the Word of God, I believe hey, this is what this says. And I took it as the Word of God, baby. And, and then I started seeing results. When I had all those growths on the bottom of my foot and on my hand, no man laid hands on me. I received healing on my own faith. In the name of Jesus, I received healing by speaking the name of Jesus for all those ugly things on my toes and feet. 
And then they rolled my hands. I received healing by reading this. And I remember hearing a man one time, and I won't tell you what denomination he is because I'm not here to be little a certain denomination because I have brothers and sisters in other denominations. And there you have God's power. I remember one time I had a buddy of mine in the Baptist church. Now his, I don't know if his colleagues believed it, but he told me personally. He says, my daughter was jump roping. Herman told me this personally when we was at work together. He said, Dennis, my daughter was jump roping and I had hardwood floors. And she tripped and her forehead, how she tripped as she fell with first, instead of getting a bump, it sunk in, Missy. Mickey, it sunk in, her forehead sunk in. Herman told me, he says, I didn't if you saw him, he put his name in it. And uh, he did. He says, Dennis, he says, I didn't have medical insurance. He said, I grabbed the hold of my daughter in my living room and said, in Jesus' name, be healed. Her forehead popped out. was completely healed before my eyes. What happened? If he would have said, oh, what happened? I got to go. Well, we're not against doctors, but there were no miracles happen in that situation. Amen. He went up with boldness and believe it. In Jesus' name, be healed. And right in front of him, his daughter's forehead yeah. came out. He, well, I'm going to tell you another man that I knew I played pool with him. This is after I was saved. He was a preacher. He believed a lot of this stuff I'm telling you is fake and phony. These people are hearing the wrong thing. Amen. And now when someone goes to preach the Bible, I don't give you, I don't give you my opinions. I don't give you my theories. I give you that. And a lot of people that go hear him, this preacher, he's pouring into them. They think what I'm preaching is error. Yeah. And it's all of this. No, what he's preaching is error. But it's so filtrated the church in America, not every church, but the majority, that they don't even believe in miracles no more. I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost asleep. Because I was believing that my mama had spoken tongues. I says, God, I want this. It's in the Bible. I come out of the bars and pool. It's in the book of Acts. I see it. And then the other church wanted it. Did you know those that were saved in the early church? It was a necessity that they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It, all Christians. Yeah. And so I saw that in the Bible. I says, God, I want this. Will you give it to me? I want the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I want more power. I sleep one night. <laughs> I was awake. Maybe I wasn't snoring that loud. Maybe I was. And I was awakened, and I was, I was staying with my sister. I said, where's that noise coming from? TV was off. Stood still. Right here out of my belly. Jesus said, out of your belly. In John's gospel. Yeah. Shall flow rivers of living water. This may kill the spirit, which was not given yet, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Right here, it seems like up through my esophagus, and it was right here in my mouth, another language I never heard. No man laid hands on me. I was waking out of sleep because I asked for it. Yeah. God's not going to give you something you don't believe in. Amen. If people don't believe in Jesus, they're not, not going to get saved. Amen. Amen. Amen? If you don't believe in Him, but believe in Christ and accept Him as Lord and Savior, and you're going to heaven, praise God, you're living here. But if you don't believe in healing, you won't receive Him. Amen. Don't worry. Somebody says, no, I don't believe in that tongue. But don't worry, you won't get it if you don't believe in it. <laughs> Just like no one won't get saved unless they believe in Jesus as the Savior. Can someone be healed, be saved without believing that Jesus is the Savior? No. It's not believe with everything else the Bible offers. We have heard the wrong thing. Yeah. Instead of the Word of God, and so many people have read the wrong thing instead of reading the right thing. Yeah. Be careful what goes into you. Be careful what you hear. And again, I will say, many people, they want to be healed and never want to hear about them. I know of people that come to one service, I think, oh God, they need to come back. Lord, 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 they need to come back to hear again. And they never came back. They never came back to hear. They need to hear. I mean, they need to hear that 
got to get back before. They got to hear the rest of that sermon. They got to hear the rest. They never came back. They hear it. They come back. You know what? Something else had their interest. Sad but true, is it? You're in Mark 6. Look at verse 3. Let's finish it. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, Joseph, and uh, Judah and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, listen, listen you got to get this, these three verses. A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. And look at verse 5. Look at verse 5. And he could. It didn't say he wouldn't. And he could there do no mighty work. Save or except that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And why could he do it? Why couldn't he get those people healed? And he marveled because of their what? And he, so what's the cure for unbelief? And he went round about villages teaching. Now, I want to ask you this question. What is a few to you? What is a few? Because some people say a few, they heal everybody. Well, the Bible tells you what a few is. What's your definition of a few? Well, the Bible says that Peter, that is a few, were saying, you know, Noah, his wife, three sons, and their wives, eight sons. The Bible calls eight a few. A few could be four, six, eight. But the Bible calls eight a few. So it says here, and if you would study this, where it says, say that he laid his hands on a few sick folk and healed them, that was something with just minor elements. Nothing serious. Why? The Bible didn't say he couldn't. Listen, it says he what? I mean, excuse me. Didn't say he wouldn't. It says he what? I mean, he couldn't do it. Why? Because of, if, listen to me, if unbelief hindered him there, unbelief hinders him today. So listen, be careful what you hear, because if you hear something that doesn't produce faith, his power's not going to go to work in your life. 